Hello, welcome to Go on the Run. And today we're going to be looking at part four of X509 circuit. I know this seemed a little bit long. Remember, my style is to develop things slowly and try to simplify it as much as possible and sort of show you from a grounds up approach. And so today we won't do any coding, but there are enough concept in this video that is going to make the video long enough. And that's why I decided not to do any coding because if we did throw in some code, then um, it would be a much longer video. And um, the other thing I'm trying to do, like I said, is to make these video shorter because that's good for you. It means that oh, I can upload video more often and you don't have to sit there that long. Here, before we get into the stuff, do me a favor, just hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and you should definitely be hitting the notification bell if you're gonna subscribe so you can know when I post videos. All right, so if you remember, we start talking about this issue of trust. And I think we were talking about digital security in episode eight or something like that, right? And what we said was, imagine that there was this guy, Bob, and he had a friend, Ann, and another friend, Ken. So Bob is friends with Ann, and Bob is friends with, with Ken. But Ken and Ann don't know each other. However, Ann has a laptop that she would like to give to Bob, but Ann is not close to Bob, right? In, let's say, a different country. Who she's close to, who's in her vicinity, is Ken. But remember, she doesn't know Ken. She's not friends with Ken. So what we'd like is for Ann to give the laptop to Ken, and so Ken can give it to Bob. Why? Because Ken is probably on vacation in Ann's neighborhood or whatever, country or something like that. And so this is what we want, but we know it all. We just can't have Ann give the laptop to just any old Ken who shows up. So what Ann needs is for Ken to prove that he is the Ken who with the common friend Bob, right? Who has a common friend Bob. Now, Ken can certainly give Ann his ID and say, here's my driver's license and this is this and that, and this proves who I am. Well, Ann may not trust that all, um, this ID, or even if it's an ID that she trusts, there could be multiple people named Ken. And like I said in earlier, much earlier, maybe Ken overheard, you know, Bob or Ann talking about how she has a laptop for a friend. So, you know, he's just some guy who just wants to get this laptop. So what is another way in which Ken can prove that how he and Bob, um, he actually knows Bob? Well, what if he pulls out a picture with him and Bob together, proving that, oh, hey, you know, there's me and Bob or a video or something. Here's us hanging out or something like this. Then he gives, shows that picture to Anne, and now she can go, oh, yes, you know, it will, <laughs> you're, you do know Bob, and there you guys hanging out, or, you know, in this video or something like that. And then at that point, she would feel a little bit more secure about um, giving um, Ken the laptop for Bob. And so we talked about this before, and we went through, and we said that all certificates are just digital IDs, right? Um, just like a, you and I might have an ID from our state, well, a certificate is sort of the same thing. And in this case, when you and I have an ID from the state, the state here being not um, like in the United States, we have different states like California, New York, and so on, but I'm not using it in the state of you know, government, right? So um, when I said the state here. And so however your place where you live does ID, you would have to, they just don't start issuing IDs. What happens is you request an ID but by supplying some information and then they validate it and then you know usually they say well if you want a driver's license you have to provide proof of your address your birth certificate and other things right they have these points or at least that's what they do in the united states before they can give you an id now i didn't show the um, request part of this what i just show you now is that the state issues id and so the state would issue an id to Anne, and the state for example would issue an id for ken but Notice I said this is an ID request and issue because you would have to request the ID first before you're issued it, right? If somebody does not request a state ID, whether it's a driver's license, passport, whatever, they don't get it. The state just doesn't run along and start issuing IDs randomly to people, right? You have to request it. And I want you to keep this idea that you have to request it for in mind because you make a request to get an ID, you have to provide something to the state, and then the state sends you the ID. Well, let's talk about CERT. And with CERT, we have the same thing. We have this certificate request and issue. Now notice I've changed here from, from Bob, Ken, and um, Anne to know I have a certificate authority where my Bob used to be. And I have Corporation A, 
for Anne and basically Corporation B for Ken. A Corp would create a certificate, right? We know how to create a certificate. Now we've been doing self-signed certificate so far, but in the next video, we're gonna create a certificate and have it signed. So we're gonna do in code what we're gonna describe here. Remember, I want you to understand the process for us before we do it in code so you can see the connection. And so A Corp is going to create a certificate. This is the same as when you fill out an application form to request an ID. That's why I said earlier that I want you to remember that you make a request for an ID before it's issued to you. Exact same way a corporation that wants a certificate will has to will have to create a cert with some information about that corporation and then they create something called a certificate sign-in request and they send it to a CA, which is our certificate authority, which is this company, again, another company that is trusted by other companies to maintain and, you know, create sorts and maintain them, revoke them and all this other stuff and keep them safe. And keep, of course, the keys that you use to sign those um, certificates safe. And so A Corp sends its certificate to the CA cert. The CA cert looks at the information on it, just like how your government would look at your application form and say, Yep, yep, this checks out, this checks out, um, or maybe I need to follow up with you to verify something. But then the CA cert is going to do all that stuff. And now they sign that certificate by saying, yes, we verify that oh, this is a valid company and they send that back to A Corp. Now A Corp has a signed certificate from that certificate authority. Remember, there could be multiple, multiple certificate authority like VeriSign and who's the other one? Let's Encrypt, Semantic. So there are a number of them out. So, the exact same thing is going to happen with B Corp. It's going to create a certificate and it's going to do a sign, um, certificate request, sign a request. And it basically is a type of certificate that it sends to the CA that says, Hey, this is my information. I would like you to sign this for me or to state to other people that, oh, yes, I'm verified. And see, the certificate authority is going to do the same thing of verifying B Corp and then create a signed certificate with its own certificate. Remember how we in code create a self-signed certificate? Well, now that we have our self-signed certificate, we could sign other certificates. Now, what we did was in code, we create a certificate and at the same time signed it. And if you remember, I showed you that how we had the issuer of the certificate plus the requester or the subject, and they were both the same. That's all we know was a self-signed certificate. Later on, what we're gonna do is we'll create a certificate and, re and also set how we want it to be signed send it after a CA and a CA will sign it. And then we're going to end up with a new certificate that the, the issuer as a different person or different information than who the certificate is about. And that's going to tell us that oh, the certificate was signed by somebody else. And so here our CA now is going to send back to B Corp that here I have issued a certificate. Okay, so now we can see how this is very, very similar to our previous situation where we had the state issuing two individual certificates, um, identities. So keep in mind that okay, the certificate is just a digital identifier that can be used to identify companies or, you know, like computing resources. Now, I want to talk a little bit about intermediate CAs. And we might not get to play with it, but I, at least I don't want to mention how this might work. So imagine that our A Corp has a certificate from the certificate authority, which I'm calling CA for now. And the type of certificate it got allows it to sign other certificates. Now the reason why is that A Corp might have a set of machines, right? The corporation has a set of machines, some servers, some laptops, blah, blah, blah. And it wants to make sure that oh, the services provided by its machine, by its servers, um, only you know trusted other computing devices connect to them. So it might require that oh, these machine have a certificate and so what a corp might be able to do is create certificate for each of its machine now it doesn't when it creates a certificate again on those hosts you'd create a certificate and then you would ask the corporation which you're part of to sign it and so they would have their own internal process for signing internal certificate but because they sign it with a certificate that they got from ca we can say that a corp is acting like a ca but it's only a CA for its own set of machine. And B Corp can do the exact same thing, right? It signs its certificate for its machine. No, again, this depends on the type of certificate that A Corp and B Corp, if they got that certificate, allow them to be able to sign additional certificate. Now, why would these companies want to do that? Well, I already mentioned that oh, they want to be able to 
verify and make sure that the computers that are talking to each other within the network are trusted and you don't walk off the street and just try to connect and do things, right? And the server doesn't try and talk to your computer or anybody else. So imagine that oh, it, in B Corp, we have this host, host B3, that's belong to the B Corp domain. And then up at the top, we have a host A5 that's in the A Corp domain. If host B3 wants to talk to A5 through the internet, well, they can. And let's say they require secure communication. What can happen? So host B connects to host 5 and say, hey, send me your certificate. I want to know who you are. I want to verify it. I'm talking to the right host A5 that belongs to A Corp. So send me your certificate. Host A5 sends host B3 its certificate. Now, how does host B3 know that we can trust host A5? Well, host um, B3 got a certificate from A5 that was signed by A Corp. And host B doesn't have A Corp certificate to say I can verify it. But what it does have is that in the certificate that it got from host A5, it was signed by A Corp. But then A Corp certificate was also signed by the CA. And host B has that CA as a trusted CA. So what it can do now is say, you know what? Even though this certificate I got from host A5 was signed by A Corp, A Corp certificate was signed by CA. And I trust the CA. So you know what? I therefore trust this so, um, the certificate I'm getting from host A5. Does that make sense? So it's this chain of certificate or chain of CA that you can do. And so we can call A Corp in this example, an intermediate CA. Um, because it's sign-in certificate and host B can accept those certificate because it could go up the chain and say, well, who signs host A certificate? A Corp. Who signed A Corp certificate? The CA. And I trust that CA. And again, it doesn't mean that our host B um, um, certificate had to have the same root CA. At that point, if you notice, I just introduced a new term. I said root CA because as you go further and further back up the chain, you eventually end up at a, a root where it doesn't go back anymore. We could have introduced two different root CA here. So we could say we have CA1, which issues source to A Corp, and then CA2, which issues source to B Corp. And they can still trust each other so long as the host in um, has that it should trust certificate from that root or in the intermediate one. But if it has that it can trust sort from the root, then it can just go back up the chain and get to the root and go, oh, yeah, I trust any certificate. Because it doesn't always know all the intermediates, right? You don't have to populate it. You only need to populate it with the root, and then it could go back up the chain. So I hope that makes sense. Now, like I said, the thing we just described is what's called a certificate sign-in request. And you see something as CSR. And that basically mean um, a company issues a certificate sign-in request that it sends, which means it creates a certificate, from that certificate, it gets something called a certificate signing request. And it's a special type of certificate that has all the information about the company and their certificate that it wants signed. They send that to a CA and the CA signs back and send them the actual certificate now that they are going to use. All right. So I think that's a good place to end sort of this discussion. If you haven't hit like on this video, man, what are you waiting for? Please hit the like. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please. Um, I'll be back with an example where we will get to see how to create a certificate with a signing request and then sign it. All right. Take care. Have a great day. Stay safe.